Hi, everybody. My name is Paul Toomey. I'm president of Geographic Solutions. At Geographic Solutions, we specialize in developing and maintaining online software solutions for the workforce development industry. Our software helps people get a job, including providing career advice, appropriate training, access to government benefits, including unemployment insurance. Regardless of the individuals that we're serving, our software is geared towards providing the necessary tools as a means for gainful employment, regardless of background or barriers. Over the next few months, join us for our Pathways to Employment webinar series. In each episode, we'll highlight how our clients are using our products in unique and inspiring ways, in ways to help job-ready individuals secure employment. Hey, we're glad you've joined us today and hope you'll walk away with new insights and perspectives. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions. Thanks so much. Have a great day. Well, thank you, Paul, for that inter introduction to our Pathways to Employment webinar series. My name is Richard Boone, and I'm a business development executive here at Geographic Solutions. I'd like to welcome everyone who's joining us today from uh, all across the country. And uh, I am joined by my co-host, Evan Brenner. Evan? Hey, Richard. Thank you so much. Um, throughout this series, Pathways to Employment, we'll showcase our client partners and show how they're defining success using geographic solutions products. In today's event, our speakers from Tulare County will show how reentry services are impacting their initiatives and goals. Yeah, Evan, so the product that will be part of today's discussion is our virtual one-stop reentry employment opportunity solution, or BOSS Rio. So Voss Rio is a custom portal designed exclusively for justice involved individuals to help them secure employment more quickly, both pre-release and post-release, which can have a, a big impact on recidivism. And as you'll hear today from our partners in Tulare County, it also gives reentry staff the ability to collaborate more effectively. Thank you, Richard. A bit of housekeeping before we get kicked off with our speakers from Tulare County. Feel free to ask questions, but we will wait until the end of the presentation to answer. This session will be recorded and we will email a link when it's ready. And now I'd like to introduce Lisa Martinez, Workforce Development Analyst from the Workforce Investment Board in Tulare County. Um, Lisa, an interesting little uh, segue or tidbit is that on this date, um, several years ago, Tulare County signed the contract to go forth with the reset portal. So Lisa, let me go ahead and uh, get you set up here. Hi, Evan. Thank you. And thank you, GS Solutions, uh, for inviting Tulare County Reset Program uh, to present um, some information today about our readiness for our employment through Sustainable Education and Training Reset Program. Evan, is the presentation a go? Yes, Lisa. Go, go ahead. Thank you. So thank you again, GS Solutions. My name is Lisa Martinez, and I'm with the Tulare County Workforce Investment Board here with our team today to share some information about our reset program. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the history of the program, how it was developed, uh, the strategies and design of the program, and how we continue to make it sustainable, as well as each of our partners in the program and what our roles are in the program. And then we have a special guest presenter, um, Christine Mancias, who uh, experienced the program firsthand and, and helped her um, get her to her career path today. So thank you all for being here today. I'd like to introduce our team who will be presenting today. We have Jonathan Thompson, who's the Assistant Director at our Employment Connection, Americans Job Center of California, our one-stop uh, career services center in Tulare County. We have Michelle Maduro, and William Jones, both with, um, I'm sorry, William Jones, both uh, reset officers in Tulare County uh, with our probation department. So where is Tulare County? We are West Coast in California, and we are in the heart of the San Joaquin Valley, which is the agriculture heartland of California. 
uh, our makeup is 4,839 square miles and our population is 466,195. And in that population, we have about 300, I'm sorry, 3,600 adults on probation and 900 youth. And so this really, um, those that data really identifies the need uh, to be able to strategically uh, serve this population and help connect them to workforce. So what is the RESET program? It is intended to help prepare individuals that are currently under the jurisdiction of Tulare County Probation Department for workforce training, education, and employment opportunities. The program increases those opportunities for justice-involved individuals by helping obtain gainful employment to achieve self-sufficiency with an overall goal of reducing recidivism. How was RESET first established? In 2014, the Tulare County Probation Department had a vision. They wanted to be able to better prepare the individuals that they were serving for workforce. So they reached out to the Workforce Investment Board to partner. Around the same time, the California Workforce um, Development Board issued a request for proposal for the Workforce Accelerated Fund um, grant proposing to, to serve, um, to fund $150,000 for an innovative new project to serve justice involved individuals. The Workforce Investment Board applied and received that grant and it launched the pilot reset project. So our first memorandum of understanding was developed between the Workforce Investment Board and Tulare County Probation in 2014. Due to the project, we expanded and were able to leverage funds and continue to, to um, have a memorandum of understanding with Tulare County Probation. So we expanded the program and now Tulare County Probation funds two business resource specialists at our one-stop career centers. And they also, um, we leverage funds through our WIOA basic and individualized career um, programs. And we're able to utilize that funding to fund other trainings and opportunities for the individuals that we, we serve, such as transitional jobs and on the job training. We also expanded uh, locations, and so we have dedicated uh, career specialists and business resource specialists to serve this population at two of our one-stop centers in Tulare County. We also leverage funds through other special grants. Um, those include federal grants, state grants, and local grants, and that helps fund training opportunities for the individuals we serve as well. Due to the success of the Adult Reset Program, we also expanded to serve the youth population um, ages 16 to 19 and developed the R2Y program in Tulare County. What does the future hold for Reset? We plan to continue to partner and share resources. And we've also been invited by Tulare County Probation to present a proposal to co-locate workforce services at Tulare County Probation um, facility. This will allow us to have career coaches and business resource specialists co-located at probation and be able to assist in providing wraparound services to our customers. One of the key components to the RESET program is our partnerships. This is um, a key element and it's important to establish your partnership develop and define the roles of each of the partners involved in a particular project and bring on as um, other partners in your community for support. Um, we also co-enroll our individuals and have a single system, uh, database management system that we use for co-case management. So what is the role of the Workforce um, Investment Board of Tulare County? We oversee the goals and objectives um, of the project. We have a memorandum of understanding with Tulare County Probation. We facilitate partner meetings and provide technical assistance to our partners. We serve as the fiscal agent and grant manager for this particular project. We also monitor program activity and compliance uh, with our service providers and partners. 
And we also have a goal of sustaining the particular um, pro the reset project. And we do that by securing additional funding. And as I mentioned, um, applying for additional grants and funding through state, local, federal um, funding projects. And we contract with our uh, CBOs in our community to help provide and link our uh, individuals to other resources in the community. So I'd like to pass it over to our team, William, uh, to share about Tulare County Probation's role. Hi, everyone. This is William Jones. I'm a probation officer here in Tulare County. Uh, Lisa, can you put the PowerPoint back up? Uh, so I'm one of our two probation officers. Uh, the other one is Officer Maduro. She'll be talking here in a little bit, but just want to kind of talk about how we kind of get started. So first, the recruitment and screening of individuals comes from the probation officers themselves. Whenever they have someone who has a need that's looking for employment or even education, could be a GED, high school diploma, vocational ed, they get referred over to us and we facilitate uh, reset job readiness workshops. Uh, what that can include is how to fill out applications, how to work on a budget, we also do a career scope, which is a career aptitude test, so that they see what kind of interests and skills that they do have. Uh, then we get them set up on the TC Reset portal. And on there, we have a resume builder that we use, show them how to search for jobs. And we also uh, create the Wagner Prize registration, which kind of starts the whole process for employment connection um, to kind of go from there. We also provide some supportive services. Uh, that could be small incentives as food vouchers, uh, bus passes to help get, get around. Uh, and then we co-case manage with Employment Connection. So once our workshop's done, our team doesn't stop right there. We continue working with the career coaches going forward on whatever needs are available, uh, updating contact information, just make sure our clients are staying in touch with them. Uh, and that's kind of what the follow-up services were. And now Officer Madero will be talking a little bit about what the portal is. Once they complete their workshops, we then assist them with registering them on TC Reset Portal um, and make sure that their profile contact information is all up to date. Um, once they complete that, we're then um, doing step-by-step -step, uh, creating a resume with them and showing them how to upload a resume that they may have um, saved on their desktop. Um, once that is completed, we then show them how to navigate the portal to job search through state, by county, um, by city, and also by the job uh, the job number from the um, Job Connect flyers. Once we're done with that, we then will upload the participant's electronic referral onto their portal. As, uh, as well as their I-9 documents, and then transition to the warm handoff with Employment Connection. Thank you very much. Hi, everyone. I'm thrilled to be here today. My name is Jonathan Thompson uh, from the America's Job Center here in Tulare County. And, you know, Jonathan, I just wanted to kind of take a second here to ask um, about the warm handoff. And I think this is a good point in between the probation and employment connection to, to ask about that. I, I appreciate the question very much. And I do think that it's a significant aspect of uh, what happens. Uh, many of you today that are on this call are uh, in some form of law enforcement, we noticed, uh, or you're in workforce services. So much of this information is going to be very familiar to you, perhaps, um, uh, depending on your role um, uh, in your professional workplace. Um, so I'm not going to go over all of these details. Uh, this slideshow will be available to you after the presentation. But uh, if you haven't gathered by now, uh, up to this point uh, in this program, the presence of a multi-agency team of individuals uh, is an incredible part uh, of this program. And Evan, imagine if um, you uh, went to uh, buy a car, let's say, and the dealer referred you to the DMV, uh, and you had to accomplish multiple aspects of uh, that car purchase and ownership at the DMV. Uh, we all know what that's like. But now imagine that that dealer actually walked you into the back door of the DMV, 
introduced you to multiple DMV staff. It gave you a great overview of DMV services uh, and uh, helped you uh, understand and easily navigate what you needed to do at the DMV. That'd be unheard of, of course. <laughs> but that's the concept of a warm handoff. Uh, individuals uh, who come into a job center uh, are actually joined sometimes uh, in the form of what we call a warm handoff uh, by probation officers like William and Michelle. They meet a team that you've heard about already uh, of individuals from uh, receptionists to administrators to uh, what we call job developers, career counselors. They get a tour of the job center. And this is such an important aspect of, of this because it, if, if those of you out there are at all like the rest of us, uh, it's intimidating uh, to go into a job center. It's intimidating and difficult to navigate social services. It's uh, difficult to navigate many of the aspects of, uh, of, of what we're talking about and what we do for a living, even for us, and this is what we do. So that's a very key component of this, Evan, a warm handoff. Um, I am glad to be here today. Um, I, I represent um, a team of superstars. And that is a significant part uh, of why there's been success with regard to the RESEP program here in Tulare County. Uh, I would be embarrassed and remiss not to um, uh, mention that there are actually seven individuals, for those of you that work in workforce services, um, that's a pretty incredible um, uh, challenge that we have been able to navigate in how to leverage seven full-time uh, professionals in the workforce system who work directly with individuals that are referred uh, to the job center here for services. Uh, we have a team that is uh, very intentionally designed to not only be um, uh, experts in managing the programs and processes, but they are a team of individuals who are tremendous at working with people. At the end of the day, um, uh, we really value the reality that People are people first and participants second. So whether you're working with Delane or David or Herb or Johnny or Edward or Scotty or Maria, uh, you're working with an individual who is there to advocate for you. On this slide that you're seeing on the screen right now, I just want to mention uh, with that in mind, a couple of, uh, of aspects of an individual participant's engagement with the job center. There's a couple of things on here that are just um, um, headings uh, or titles, if you will, uh, but they're extremely important. The ability for us to co-case manage uh, uh, with uh, probation and other uh, programs, grants, and services opens up a, a, a dramatic um, uh, list or opportunity of resources for individuals to take advantage of in this program. Uh, individuals that are on staff with America's Job Center are professionals at working with local employers and they actually market, they go out and represent, they advocate for, if you will, um, uh, individuals in the program in order to gain employment. Uh, life can be hard and um, to have advocates on your side, on your team, uh, to help you with their employment objectives uh, is a huge aspect uh, of this as well. On the next slide, you'll see some more of these concepts. The RESET program has funded uh, specific individuals. We've also leveraged uh, funds to be able to create a large team around them uh, and to assist them with the different things that you're seeing on the screen. Again, if you work in uh, workforce services, you're familiar with these, helping them continue on in what William mentioned um, uh, with their career uh, planning, uh, helping them to get access to an enrollment in all programs that could be available. Uh, at America's Job Centers, uh, uh, if you're familiar with them, you know that we have a, 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 a lot of resources uh, technologically that individuals can access when they're here. And, um, and the, the ultimate objective for us uh, is to help individuals through this program gain employment to help them lead to self-sufficiency. And that's our part in this, and, and that's what we strive to accomplish. Thank you, Jonathan. So I just wanted to share some of our outcomes uh, for the RESET program. Since January 2015 uh, to October of this year, 866 individuals have completed job readiness through the Tulare County Probation um, Job Readiness Workshops. 
and 690 of those individuals, which is about 80%, transition to actually to enroll in our Employment Connection Centers. And 307, which is about 45% of those that have enrolled, have um, gained employment. And as, as Jonathan mentioned, um, with, through our leverage funds and other grants that we have, we're able to provide training opportunities for the individuals that we serve. And this includes CTE programs, on the job training, transitional jobs, because of the business relationships that our team has, our business resource specialists, um, we're able to link our, our individuals to employers for on the job training and paid transitional jobs. And through our partnership with Tulare County and our shared data management system and the TC Reset Portal, we communicate information to track recidivism um, on a 12-month um, basis. And so the uh, about the res current recidivism rate for the Adult Reset Program is about 10.5%. Um, we also began the Youth Reset Program in 2018. And so as since July of 2018, uh, we've received 128 referrals. So those youth have completed job, job readiness soft skills at Tulare County Probation. And this um, is age group 16 to 19. 59 of those have enrolled in Employment Connection and 32 have already received a paid work experience through our program. So I'd like to introduce a very special guest that we have here with us today. Christine Mencias um, is a, an individual that was formerly attending uh, and participated in the RESET program and helped her lead to her career path today. So we have the honor of um, sharing Christine Mencias who will um, talk about her story and her experience with the TC RESET program. Thank you for being here, Christine. Hello, can you hear me, Lisa? Yes, thank you. I wasn't sure, am I? Hi, Christine, well, yes, my first you, we, can, we can hear your audio. Do you want me to share how I got to introduce to the RESET? Sure, tell us a little bit about how you first got connected to the RESET program and what your experience is, uh, was in the program, and then how it led you uh, to where you are today. Okay, so today I'm employed at Central Valley Recovery Services as a Assurance Quality Coordinator. I first came to RESET in 2017. Um, I went to the probation and I asked for help. I didn't even know there was such a program that would help a felon. And so they told me about the program and then I started to participate and go to all the workshops and they placed me at one job that ended up moving to Fresno. I stayed there for almost a year. So then I went back to the reset and they um, helped me get going again and then they placed me at New Heights. So. That was where I worked with Herb and Lisa, and they began to work with me and they asked me my skills and things. And I said, oh, I'm a felon. They're not gonna hire me in things that I used to do. However, um, they encouraged me. They truly encouraged me and told me that to, you know, that they believe that they can, I can get in that kind of a career and job again. And so they placed me at New Heights and I was there gonna be a receptionist for just, intern or training and that position led to opening up for an alcohol and drug counselor where I went through the schooling and then that position opened up where I went to I got a promotion to administration and became a quality assurance where I worked throughout all of the Central Valley recovery programs going around doing training working with management and as well as other things they helped me with, personal things, I went back and I remember asking her for help um, to build my credit <laughs> and uh, things like that, things that they probably didn't have to do with work anymore, but they were still very helpful in getting me going in my life, as well as very, very much in my career. It was a great experience. It helped me build confidence in who I was again and showing me that I can do these things. It was a really good experience for me. 
I always tell people and refer people that come into the programs if they're to go to a reset to get when they're ready and they're ready for that step in their life to get their career going and job placement that that is a great program and it has great opportunities to place them not only just in any job but a job that they are looking for so i had a really good experience with reset forever grateful So, Christine, you mentioned that uh, you were in the program and after your first job had um, changed locations, you were able to return back to the program. How did that experience feel and how would the program accepting you back and continuing to provide you career services? That was, um, I was a little discouraged because they weren't sure if, at first if they were going to be able to help me. And I was just like, well, maybe you guys could just place me at um, a warehouse anywhere. I just wanted a job. And Reset worked really closely with me and doing all that they can, writing letters, letting them know that my situation, and I got the extended uh, work time to go to another uh, job site, which was amazing, which landed up to a long-term career. So Christine, you mentioned um, a long-term career. So what are your ultimate goals? Well, I work closely with the CEO of Central Valley and we've talked and we're, I'm gonna be signing back up to get my master's. Um, she says she really sees that when she retires, she sees me becoming the next CEO of Central Valley Recovery Services, which is amazing to hear. So I did not see that for myself. And Christine, would you be open to sharing a little bit about your educational path as well? Yes, I was started off in nursing um, years after high school and went to a um, few computer courses and typing classes. And my, my goal in the past was nursing. However, I knew I could never go down that uh, career again. And so that opened up the door to something different now today. And it's uh, amazing. So the schooling that I had was nursing, but today the schooling I'm gonna get is um, the master's in administration to uh to go ahead and go into the ceo or to work under the ceo today i want to say it's um human resources maybe we were putting all the courses together so it's something we're working on together me and the ceo she's helping me sign up in all the classes that i need will be needing so i did do some college in the past um never completed but today I'm determined and will be completing, hopefully within the next five to six years. Christine, thank you so much for sharing your experience. And as she presented, um, the support that Christine received was a team effort and very much a wraparound uh, support through Tulare County Probation, uh, career services, and including her current employer. And that took effort um, from the whole team to connect with, with those employers to um, transition Christine to gain some work experience. And she excelled in that role and is continuing in her career path. Any other um, suggestions or advice that you'd like to share, Christine? I really uh, strongly believe the program has helped and is still helping today many. I was the first reset hire at Central Valley, and since then, I have seen three more hires. And when I went, they said they were not hiring. And since then, they have now opened up that door to taking in reset. So I think that this is a great program, um, you know, for those that are really wanting that life change. And just, I think it, I'm really grateful. 
And I know that those others that I work with are grateful as well. Thank you, Christine. You can, as you can see, this really does take a partnership in our community and working with all of our partners together to uh, serve our community. Thank you, Christine, and we wish you all the best and are continuing to be here uh, as a support. You're welcome. Thank you, Lisa, again. <laughs> So Evan, I will transition back to you. Yeah, hi, this is uh, Richard again. So uh, we do have a few questions. Um, first one was, uh, will there be handouts for today's presentation? Um, and the, there was a second one about, will this be recorded? And, and I think Evan mentioned, yes, we uh, this is being recorded and we will make the link available as soon as it's posted on our website. Uh, another couple of questions uh, have to do with uh, recidivism. Uh, hold on just a minute, this screen's a little different. Um, and a definition, how, how do you all define uh, recidivism? Is it uh, the arrest or conviction or a new referral to probation? Thank you for that um, question. It is an arrest and conviction. So because we have shared data and the shared data management system, Tulare County Probation and Workforce has information of all of the individuals that have been referred and enrolled in the program. And so we're able to, um, using that data, probation will then determine um, if any of those individuals have um, received a new conviction within a 12-month period. And so on a yearly basis, that information is updated and then reported back to uh, the Workforce Investment Board. Okay, and a follow-up question to that is, can you expand on the assertion that the recidivism rate um, is below state averages and what that's based on. And, and I do know that there was a, a report put out in 2015 by the Public Policy Institute of California on California, uh, California's historic corrections reforms. And in that report uh, for county probation specifically, uh, they indicated that the uh, rearrest rates range from 61% to 78% with an average of 71%. Of I don't know if, if you all have any other sources that, that you could refer to, but I think that's the one that, uh, um, that, we've, that we've come across. The Tulare County Probation Department's um, most recent data overall was around 37% recidivism. I believe they're working to on um, current data. Um, so comparatively, it is a lower rate uh, for those that have gone through the reset program. And that attests to the partnerships amongst all of the agencies that you heard from today, in addition to other community supports as well. Um, and then not only for those individuals that are actively in the program, but they continue to receive follow-up support through all of the partner agencies involved, including things like supportive services to help with transportation, to help with um, interview clothes, work clothes, other things that they may need that are barriers to sustain their employment. Okay, thank you. Uh, another question, who exactly funds RESET? Is it Tulare County or the local AJCC? That is a great question. So the initial pilot was um, funded through the um, grant, the workforce, uh, the WAF grant, um, and that was the initial pilot in 2015. But stemmed from that pilot project, Tulare County Probation funds the TC Reset Portal. They fund two reset officers at probation that are the liaisons between the probation officers and workforce. And they fund two 
business resource specialist at our American Job Centers of California. However, we leverage our funds for training opportunities, additional career services, um, both probation and workforce help with supportive services. So it is not a program funded just by one entity. Um, Tulare County Probation provides some of the funding and then workforce leverages the other funding through other special grants and WIOA um, funding as well. Okay, uh, another question. Can you talk about what a case management session looks like from a client's perspective? That's a great question. And I would actually like to defer both to Jonathan at our Employment Connection Center, as well as uh, Christine, having gone through the program, if she wants to share any insight. Go ahead, Christine. Okay, sorry, I had to unmute myself. So case management, networking me to different places. Um, they, for one, I believe they network. I did not have a driver's license um, at the time of employment to keep my job. So they networked me to helping me work those fines out and helping me get those uh, situated so I can get a driver's license, which I did. Very proud that was something that was a great accomplishment. Um, to get clothing. Um, they helped me with get the proper clothing for the job that I was needing, the job I was getting, I'm sorry. So many different resources that they referred me to, a list of them for different things, whatever it was that I was in need of, I can ask them. That was with something that we're really great with. Co Thank you, Christine. Co-case co management uh, happens on a uh, very large um, scale a big picture scale as well as a very practical scale so an individual who comes into a job center uh, or even into probation uh, has the opportunity to sit down uh, at any time uh, with a job center career counselor one of the team members that i mentioned and or with a probation officer in the reset and or with a probation officer uh, that, that may be in the field and the ability to work together uh, to assist individuals with their uh, needs and or their career paths and their um, uh, pursuits uh, really comes together when you have multiple entities and multiple uh, agencies working together to do that. Uh, technologically, uh, that information uh, can be recorded, can be uh, tracked in a shared database uh, that we can all access and, and use to better uh, provide services. Okay, thank you. Uh, next question. Um, how are people, yes? <laughs> Go ahead, sorry. Okay, um, next question is, how are people screened uh, for inclusion into the program? Who does the screening and makes the decisions? That's a great question. Um, I will answer part of that and then I'd like yeah, to transition to William and, and um, Michelle, once we re it is a referral based program. So when we enroll in um, the reset program, that is based on a referral from Tulare County Probation. So William, do you want to share about the screening process? Yeah, for the screening process, uh, we get a referral from a probation officer. It could be someone who just walked into the office. They're asking how to get assistance for a job. So they find either me or Officer Maduro, and we'll have that conversation on what kind of needs are they needing and what kind of goal are they having. Now, as far as screening, we want to make sure that they're in compliance with probation because uh, we're trying to find sustainable work and prolonging, uh, decreasing recidivism. So. The way we do that is by getting them on track from the very beginning. Uh, we can do drug testing if there's substance abuse issues, just to kind of help that client stay on track and give them that carrot to motivate them to keep going and pushing forward. Uh, and then we refer them over to Employment Connection once they meet with us and we do the career scope and we show them how to build a resume and work with them on the portal. Okay, uh, another Please. question. Oh, um, yeah, I can, uh, Richard, I'll ask, I can ask the next one if, if okay, you want. Okay, sure. 
Um, this next question is, um, the, the focus, and, and Jim Hardy asks this, the focus is on employment, but um, are there uh, connections to other support services like mental health, housing, transportation, and, and others? There are high evidence, Jonathan. So th that that is part of the, um, uh, the success, I think, of this program. We really need a team around us in life in general, is my opinion, in order to be successful. And um, the the short answer to that question is, is absolutely uh, part of the value that uh, uh, this program has is to be excellent at connecting individuals, uh, participants. Uh, to any service available to them, whether or not it's um, uh, uh, housed alone within probation or housed alone within America's Job Center or housed alone within uh, another workforce service. The goal is to help uh, an individual uh, in their whole life in order to position them in a way in which they can be successful uh, long-term and achieve self-sufficiency. Excellent, great, thank you, Jonathan. And the next question we have is, Reset seems to be providing similar services for re-entry participants as the prison to employment state grant. Um, is is this similar or, or different? Thank you, Evan. This is Lisa with the Workforce Investment Board. So California does have a prison to employment initiative, which is statewide. And we have been able to leverage some of those funds to also serve our um, individuals that are on probation. Prison to employment will serve anyone who is justice involved or formerly incarcerated. So individuals on probation fall um, into those requirements in that category as well. So we are definitely leveraging and utilizing those funds and support to also provide training and support for our individuals that are co-enrolled in the preset program. That is one of our strategies here in Tulare County. We do co-enroll. We also have um, specialized programs for individuals that are homeless. And so there may be individuals that um, we see the need and will co-enroll into that program and be able to leverage funds as well. Thank you, Lisa. And I don't quite know if this question was answered before, but um, could you maybe go into or describe uh, what were the factors that um, helped you to to decide to deploy your own customized portal? And what features were most important to, to the job seekers and why? Um, and, and the same for the staff. So I'll give um, some of the information or partial answer, and then I'll transition to probation to talk about the most utilized features. Um, but the portal allowed the um, Tulare County Probation to have the ability to access data through our CalJobs system. Um, so the, when the pilot project began in 2000, We wanted probation to have an identity uh, through the portal. It also allowed for buy-in through all the probation officers. This co-case management aspect was really key because we were working together. Probation has access in real time to see the individual's file to know where they're at in regards to enrollment, training, and employment. So they have access to view that information in real time. William or Michelle, do you want to talk about the most utilized features? I know you went over some of the information in regards to registration, resume, and job search. I think job search is probably the main one. Um, and two, once they get their resume uploaded on there, um, it's kind of nice because they it kind of shows them if they're off of their job skills already that they have on there, if it they meet the requirements for the job listings that are posted on there and two it'll direct them straight to the website um, to apply to these jobs so it makes it a lot easier for them and we'll have them pick one job off of there and go step by step on how you would go about applying for that job and it, it'll list the um, requirements that you don't meet or that if you do meet all those requirements it'll kind of list that for you once you're clicking the link to apply to the job so using the tc reset portal 
has really been a tremendous um, assistance to our to our workforce staff as well because probation is already starting that regi that registration process. They're collecting I-9 documents or assisting with retrieving those. They're providing some job readiness uh, soft skills training. They are establishing or develop helping for individuals develop their resume. So those things are already getting started before those that individual is um, getting the warm handoff to um, our employment connection centers. And it makes the intake process go a lot quicker. So if they're bringing their I-9 documents for that first initial meeting, we're already uploading everything on there. And once they get that intake phone call, um, the process just goes a lot faster and smoother for them to get enrolled in the program. Excellent. I see. Thank you so much. Um, those were great answers. Um, I see that we are coming up on our time for this presentation. And so I would like to ask the, the crowd if there are any more questions that you would like to ask. In fact, I think I have one here. Um, the next question that we have is, what methods do, did you use to engage employers? Uh, I'm happy to uh, talk a little bit about that, Evan. Um, part of the uh, strength and success, if you will, uh, of the um, professionals who are working in the workforce services with this program mm -hmm. Part of the success has been their ability to do several things with regard to this topic of employer engagement. Uh, number one is to assess in a, in a very real and significant way uh, the individual participants and to uh, attempt to make the best match uh, with regard to any given employer. Um, anybody can go out and, and find um, any old job, so to speak, uh, but our objective is to match individuals uh, and their skills with the right employers and the employer needs. Uh, individuals, for example, who have received uh, work-based training with subsidized funds through employers in Tulare County over the past year uh, have had close to a 90% rate of staying on with those employers after their work-based training has ended. The point of that is that the um, employer engagement, in answer to the question, the long-term relationship um, that some of the workforce professionals have with these employers and their ability to match uh, a participant with that employer has been a key part uh, of the success in that. And that demonstrated success, that track record, if you will, has gone a long way uh, with employers recognizing um, that it's not always in their best interest uh, to just make decisions based on an individual's uh, uh, background. Thank you, Jonathan. And I would just like to add to that, um, that in addition, um, our business resource specialists are establishing those relationships with the employers and they're um, throughout that relationship, they're establishing trust. But in addition to our job matching and our um, work experience, paid work experience for our cut individuals that we serve, we provide many services to businesses, including recruitment assistance, rapid response, upskill. The Workforce Investment Board has a business services team that helps supports all of our um, job developers and business resource specialists in our county. And included in that team is not just um, individuals that work at our career centers, it's also our partners that we invite to the table. So we are communicating regularly with our, um, with all of our partners in regarding um, our business community and how we can serve them as well. So by serving them in all of these different avenues, we're establishing um, that trust and building those relationships, which also serves our customers on their end when we're um, connecting them to employment. Yeah, and and. Thank you, Lisa. Related to the question, too, is a, an enhancement that we have in development for second chance employers. So uh, we are going to provide employers with the ability to, to designate themselves as second chance 
and also any jobs that they post directly on the site that they can designate a second chance. So what that'll do is uh, change the priority of the search results when, a, when a, a job seeker looks for jobs. So we'll we'll pull those types of jobs out to the top. We're very excited about that enhancement. Um, Richard, just to kind of uh, round out the questions here, we do have a few more that we'll try to get to. Um, this one from, we have a statement, uh, Jessica says, having the support from probation is amazing for the workforce caseworkers. Um, I think from everything I've heard today and in talking to, to all the panelists, uh, I would uh, definitely agree and I've learned a lot about that. Um, Ryan asks, does Tulare County have a second chance um, law that assists clients in gaining employment, um, for example, clean slate, pardons, et cetera, that they have found to be helpful? Thank you for that question. Um, I'd like to, to add that in Tulare County, our strategy is not to develop a second chance employer list. Um, one of the things that we do is provide technical assistance to our workforce and our partners about what the current laws are. And also provide services to and support to the individuals we serve about what their rights are and what their laws are. So we do connect them to the Clean Slate program and provide information on expungements. We also have a Fresh Start uh, workshop and program that is part of the Reset program that helps individuals be able to explain their convictions, but at what point or what stage would they actually be explaining those convictions to an employer should they need to? So our strategy is, is to work with our employers through those relationships and really assess the individual and what their current skills are and what their goals are. It is not based on their criminal history. Thank you, Lisa. Um, and just scanning through the last couple of questions here, um, we also have a statement. Michael says, thank you for the excellent work you are doing with this population. So we absolutely thank you. Um, Meredith asks, um, how do you keep participants engaged and to continue with services? Are, are they required to meet weekly with services and what incentives, incentives are used? I'd be happy to hear from uh, uh, the officers on this topic as well, but um, in addition to requirements that uh, uh, some are even self-imposed with regard to these grants and programs, uh, we place a high value on uh, being good at uh, follow-up. We, we place a high value at being uh, excellent at staying in touch, at providing follow-up services, um, at um, at communicating well with individuals um, and I think that the part of the success of this program has been our ability to uh, actually it's a this is a rare um, a rare aspect of social service programs if you will uh, if I can say it this way and that's that uh, you are pursued uh, you are significantly pursued within this program with the uh, intent uh, of doing everything that we possibly can uh, to help you be successful. So um, the the outreach, if you will, to individuals uh, from the moment that uh, they're introduced to uh, the, the program and the the staff, from the moment that they're in, introduced, the outreach to them and the constant communication uh, with them and availability to them uh, is ongoing. And I would just like Excellent. to add on to that is that we, uh, we focus on what the client wants so and needs. So if they don't have their GD diploma, we'll kind of show them with pathways through adult school. And then through the program supportive services, we can pay for that test to help them get it. Because sometimes they just don't have the funds to pay for the test and that's what's stopping them. Uh, we're trying to find a sustainable long-term goal too. It's not just let's get them to the quickest job so they can start working right now. Sometimes that's what they need to get through housing and pay bills and that kind of stuff. But we're looking for long term. So if it's vocational training, welding schools, anything like that, we're looking for those options as well. Uh, and then trying to find them a job that they're going to enjoy and stick to. If you enjoy your job, you're going to wake up every morning. You're going to want to go to work. So that's kind of our philosophy on it is that 
we're trying to find a spot that these individuals want to be in, not just something that they have to do right now. And then and I to, wanted, oh, sorry. Go ahead, Christine. Um, to uh, a lot of the incentives we'll give out would be like uh, food gift cards um, when they're making their appointments and they're doing their workshops, if they're turning in their I-9 documents or to an incentive um, could be for some people that w if they don't have their birth certificate or their social, social, they don't, doesn't cost anything, but for the birth certificate, we've got in um, supportive services for that, for them to get that. And then same thing with a California ID. A lot of them don't have the money for it. So we give them a fee waiver for that. So it's a lot of little things like that that can keep them kind of engaged in wanting to participate and showing that we're just not wanting something from them, but we're kind of giving them something as well in return. And I just wanted to add um, and extend from something that Christine um, mentioned earlier, where she initially came in thinking um, that she could just get a warehouse job, I believe, as, as she put it. So we don't want to limit anyone to a category or a list of you can only get these jobs. That is not our focus. We really want to serve the, um, the individual based on their goals. And helping others. Um, in a way that she's been helped, that was not something she initially thought she can do. Um, so it was our our team and our partners working together with her together uh, to reach out and connect to employers to give her an opportunity, which was a paid work experience. We have individuals that are working as peer advocate supports, contact tracers, um, production, solar. We have individuals working as fabricators. Uh, truck drivers, and we even have individuals working at health and human resources, uh, health and human um, services in our area. So the opportunities are limitless, and we definitely don't want to, um, to, to limit them to just one occupation or industry. Wow. It's great information. <clears throat> um, thank you so much. I, ladies and gentlemen, I, I see that we are, are getting close to our our uh, ending time here. Um, I would like to see if I can welcome all the panelists back to share their cameras for just one second. Thank you. Uh, so we have quite a few more follow-up questions here to, to follow up with. And uh, what I would like to do is get the answer to these questions out, whether it be uh, myself working with uh, Richard and my team and the team from Tulare to get some of these last questions answered, just so we can be cognizant of our 2 p.m. Uh, stop time. Um, but I would like to sincerely thank uh, William, Jonathan, Lisa, and Michelle for, for being here with us today, for providing this information and um, just, uh, just doing a great job. I, I really appreciate it. And Christine, thank you. And Christine as well. I, I would be remiss if I did not include Christine. So, um, is there any any last thoughts that you would all would like to uh, follow up with before we uh, adjourn here? Evan, we thank you for this opportunity on behalf of Tulare County, um, and we appreciate our partners at Tulare County Probation and Employment Connection. Christine, it was an honor to have you with us here today, and thank you for share, for sharing your story. Thank you for the invitation. I really do appreciate it. And if anyone has questions directly for probation, uh, Evan, you can share my email. Uh, and then if they have direct questions for us, they can send them our way. If I don't know them, I'll send them up the chain to the supervisors and we'll figure out whatever we can help out with. Great. And contact awesome. information will be included on the slideshow that's sent out as well. Great. So however we can help. Appreciate being here today. Thank you all very much. Thank you. And there will be, as I said at the beginning, a recording. So we will, uh, as soon as that's ready, we will get that message out to everybody who has attended that that recording will be ready. We'll include the presentation from today. Um, thank you from the bottom of my heart for, for being here today. Richard, thank you for helping me co-host. Thank you all. Thank you all. Thank Have you. a great day. Thank Have you. Good day.